He needs a doctor. There's no time for that. We'll have to fix him up ourselves. Well, I'm going for one anyway. I've got posse on our necks again. Well, that's a chance we'll have to take. I'm not going to let my brother die. Listen to Clint, sis. Listen to Clint? Don't I always? That's how we got this way. Who started it? Who drove us off our land? I don't care who started it. How's it going to finish? Like my dad hung from a cottonwood tree? Or like Jeff? We'll get out of this, all right. There's enough gold in my saddlebag to set ourselves up for life on a new homestead. Nobody ever made themselves safe on blood money. Those cattlemen did. Oh. I'm going for a doc. Stop her, Clint. Lily. You better get into these. Bleeding stopped. You'll last till the doc gets here. I got ten bucks says you're wrong. It's a bet. like a gal I knew back in St. Louis. Chucks, there ain't no such animal. I'll get too close, he bites. And smell. <laughs> You're no Rosa Sharon yourself. What good's that critter anyway? Well, he can pack more than a horse, and he can go without water for almost as long as it looks like you have. But what are you trying to prove with them things, Mr. Beale? Oh, the Arabs call them ships of the desert. I'm gonna prove they can sail our deserts as well as theirs. What about that stage, Barstow? It's two hours late. That's just the way they run, one day early and the next day late. Well, I can't wait any longer. When Dr. Stanton gets here, give him a horse and have him join my outfit on the West Road. Yes, sir. Push! Push down! Hey, mister! He's heading back to Arabia! <laughs>
Sheriff. Hello, Constable. Well, what you fellas been doing? Chasing someone or running away from Indians? Robbery job over in Rio Gorda this morning. Cattleman's bank taken for about 20,000 in gold. You don't say. Well, would I be knowing any of them? You should. One of them's Clint McDonald. Oh, I know him all right. He's a bad hombre. Well, how can I help you, Sheriff? One of them was hit, so I figured they'll stay put for a while. I need enough men to, well, to fan out and close in on them. Say, Bill, you take care of Morgan's horses over to the stable and get him some fresh mounts, will you? Say, come on in, fellas. Come on. You might be hungry. We can send out for some coffee and get some eatables. Come on. Stanton? Well, I've got a horse for you. Mr. Beale said for you to catch up with his outfit on the West Road. All in good time, my good sir. I have to catch up with myself first. Is there, by chance, an oasis in this metropolis where a man may purchase drinking whiskey? Right across the street. Thank you, my good sir. About the same. This is Dr. Stanton. How do you do, sir? I nearly had to rope him to get him out here. You say most unusual proceedings, my friend. But who am I to stand on ethics in the face of a promised fee of one hundred dollars? The fool's drunk as a coup. Sir, I would have you know that Elias P. Stanton is never too drunk to perform his professional duties. But if you prefer, I will withdraw from the case. You'll stay and finish the job. If you mess it up, you'll stay for good. Get started. We've got to work fast. The sheriff's going to throw a circle all around us. Bullet is lodged near the heart. It's a bad wound. So what? You know how to get it out, don't you? Academically, yes. In practice, no. This man needs a surgeon, an MD, a regular doctor. A regular doctor? What are you? DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. A vet? Why, you crazy drunken fool? What Let's is your... stop it! Even a horse doctor's better than none. Do what you can. I shall do the best I can, miss. Fortunately, I am equipped with the proper implements. What's a vet doing with regular doctor tools? In a moment of weakness, my friend, I succumb to a Double temptation. Improve social status and the lure of California. California? Edward Fitzpatrick Beale and his Camel Corps. Seeking a new and direct route across the gray American desert. I wish I had never heard of him or of his idiotic expedition. Just imagine me larping across the desert. Short as fate, Beale will discover what a fraud I am and hang me to the nearest tree. Or stake me out in the desert sun at the mercy of savages. I wish I was back in St. Louis. Well, we are. That is the best I can do. The rest is up to nature. My hundred dollars, please. And I would to the Lord Harry that it were enough to get me back to my horse syringe and bottle of liniment. You and this Beale ever met? Never laid eyes on him. I was fool enough to volunteer by mail. I'll add a hundred of this for that bag of yours. And Fifty more for the coat and shirt. My boy, you are a gift from heaven. Take it over. 
Uh, just a moment, please. Just a moment. Hop, sir. Always carry an extra one. St. Louis, here I come. And I hope I get back in time for the annual epidemic of hog cholera. Oh, I wouldn't move the lad yet. He's lost too much blood. Good luck, doctor. And remember, when in doubt about symptoms, do nothing at all. That is the secret of a successful medical practice, even in my field. Clint, do you really think you can get away with it? Why not? With this outfit, I look as much like a doctor as he does. We're going to California. But Jeb isn't fit to travel. Well, wait till he is. We can always catch up with a wagon train. No, you've got to go now. Before Beale sends one of his riders back into town to see what happened to Stanton. I can't leave you and Jeb here to be picked up by the sheriff. But you must go. We'll be all right till morning. Jeb will be stronger then. Won't you, Jeb? Sure. Go on, Clint. We'll make it. All right. Keep your eyes open. Don't let the posse ring you in. I won't, Clint. No hurry. I'll be looking back for you. All the way. But I'll be looking ahead for you. Catterwall and Heans, that's what they are. Don't seem to matter much how a man looks to God, as long as he looks. Howdy, stranger. What are you doing out in these parts? I'm joining up with his outfit. You wouldn't be the doctor the Beale's waiting for. That's me. Name is Stanton. You better know what to do about sick camels. We're gonna have a lot of them before this trip's over. Don't pay no heed to Matt, Doc. He don't figure nothing's worth anything, except the state of Tennessee. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Owens. Come with me, Doctor. Beale's going to be mighty glad to see you. Well, we can all start getting sick now, sir. Here's our wayward medicine man. Hello, Stanton. I've almost given you up. The stage was late leaving Rio Gorda, Mr. Beale. Why don't you take the doctor's horse over to the picket line? If you don't mind, sir, I'd like to take care of him myself. I was expecting an older man, maybe one not quite up to our kind of trip. You look just as fit as any of us. Well, my practice keeps me pretty much out in the open, sir. That's fine. We're going to do some rough traveling. We're taking the shortest route to California. We're heading due west from this big bend in the Santa Fe Trail. Cuts off 400 miles. Army tried to survey it. We'll find the bones of the survey crew right about here. Kit Carson says we won't even get that far, but he's wrong. The North Africans traveled all over the Sahara with camels and survived. I'm going to swim mine right into the Pacific Ocean. Looks like awful lonely country. It is, except for Apaches. You want to go home? Not me. The lonelier, the better. Good. Get some sleep. We pull out at dawn. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Mr. Beale.
We're on their trail. Break up into pairs and fan out. I can't make it, Lily. Along about that time of day, ain't it, boss? Yeah. We'll camp down by that creek, Lieutenant. Sir, we've got a couple of hours of light left yet. Almost sundown. My native boys have some praying to do. <laughs> Give the word. Matt, we're camping here. This early? Yep. It's because them camels is tired. Turn them over to me. I'll pack them on my mules. They ain't even worked up a sweat today. Just you wait till we hit the real desert where there ain't no water. Then we'll see who packs who. <laughs> ain't so good. You want to do business? I'm not running this show. You'll have to speak to the man who is. You? Not me. We met some way, ain't we? I'm Toad Ellis. That mean anything to you? It ought to. His picture's nailed up a lot of places. I haven't been a lot of places. I could be wrong, but I usually ain't. Cover them!
Take over, will you? you? Just nicked you, nothing to worry about. It was my arm, not yours. Wrap it up. Ain't you gonna wash your hands? What do you think? It's pretty handy with a gun. About as quick as I've ever seen. A dead-on shot. I've seen better. Funny thing, Toad Ellis thinking he knew you. Sure you ain't in the wrong business, Doc. You handle a gun a lot better than you do a roll of bandage. Why are you so nervous? I ain't used to killing people, except in my own patients. How is he, Stamp? Just a nick. He'll be all right. Lieutenant Owens tells me you saved three of our horses. One of them was mine. It's been a pretty good horse. You risked your life for him. All I owned was on him. There you are, High Jelly. No pork in yours. Okay. How do you like that? Special grub for them monkeys. Quit your beefing. You know them fellers can't eat pork. You heathens don't know what's good. Here, try this. <laughs> to pull a toad stabber on me. <laughs> Next time you lay a hand on those boys, I'll kill you. You saw what was going on. Why didn't you do something? I don't fight other men's quarrels. I just patch them up afterwards. What would you fight for? The only thing every man fights for. Self-preservation. up a bed for her in that wagon. Easy now, ma'am. <clears throat> You'll be all right. Some cold water, Lieutenant. Certainly, Doctor. You've been a long time, Lily. What happened? Clinty's dead. Jeb's dead. I never should have left you. First my dad, then Jeb. Oh, Clint, I'm tired of running. Tired of hiding and fighting. I know, honey. We'll stop running in California. What if he sends me back? Not as long as I'm the doctor. You'll be all right now, ma'am. You're safe and sound. Here, drink this. Get a good night's sleep. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night, Doc. Good night, Lieutenant. 
How is she? There's nothing wrong with her, but she's too worn out to talk. You better let her rest for the night. There's no harm in that. We'll have to find out where she came from and send her back. We can't have a woman with this outfit. See, you're feeling so much better. Let's have a look at those eyes. We're never going to be apart again, Lily. You'll never know how I missed you, worried about you. I can't stand being away from you, Clint, not for a minute. One day further west and Beale can't send you back. We'll be together for good. Really for good, Clint. Just more of the same. From now on, honey, we'll be playing with a whole new deck of cards. What good's a new deck? You go on dealing them off the bottom. Just told you, honey. If you're going to be fine, ma'am. Morning. Good morning. You rested enough to travel? I think so. I'm good. Right after breakfast, I'll have a fresh horse saddled and send you back with a troop escort. Back where? Wherever you came from. I have no place to go, she Mr. She was just Dean. telling me she tried to catch up with a wagon train and mistook our tracks for theirs. Where were they headed? Well, all I know, it was to follow the old Spanish trail toward Albuquerque and then make a cut off westward. Had to put them 200 miles from here. How'd you get separated from them? Well, I was never with it. You see, my, my dad was ailing, and well, the doctor thought California would be good for him. We found out about the wagon train and tried to catch up with it, but dad grew worse and worse, and finally he... I understand. Well, I guess we just have to make the best of it. Can't travel like that. Our bugler's about your size. I'll see what I can do for you. Thanks. Nice going, honey. You sure sold him a nice, shiny gold brick. Yeah, I'm a good liar these days. I've had lots of practice. How are you making out, ma'am? Not bad if I could get some of this dust and grime off me. That's a fair-sized water hole down by those willows. Oh, I've given the order that's out of bounds. Well, you're going to a lot of trouble for someone you figured to be excess baggage. You're still excess baggage. Take this along. If you have to use it, just hold it in both hands and pull the trigger. Don't shut your eyes when you shoot. Looks like the boss has took a liking to you, ma'am. He most always don't think of nothing except them camels. I can't say I blame him much, either. What's the gun for, miss? Coyotes, doctor. The Apaches around. It ain't safe to be away from camp so far. Get out of here and quick. Somebody's got to keep an eye on that scalp of yours. You wouldn't look so good without it.
I told you this stretch of stream was out of bounds. Nobody told me nothing. I come up here to take a bath. The next thing I know, I'm being shot at. Get back to your mules. Doc, I seem to remember you don't fight except for, how did you put it, self-preservation? That's right, but I don't like peeping toms. That's your only reason? Name me a better one. I did just what you said, Mr. Beale. Held it in both hands and pulled the trigger. But I think I must have closed my eyes. I used to have you shooting at me with them open. Hills, boss. No, they're squarely across our trail. We'll have to go around one side or the other. Looks like the south end be the shorter way from here, Mr. Beale. Well, we'll let a survey decide that. Sir, if we don't stop now, we can make another 10 miles today. We're not interested in speed, Lieutenant, just accuracy. Easiest way may be the longest. Set up for survey. You've got a half hour's rest, ma'am. We have some work to do. I'm tired of eating dust. I'd like to ride up ahead with you and see what goes on, if you don't mind. Not at all. Afraid you'll find it pretty dull. Hit the dirt and ease your senses. Time out for man and beast. What are you trying to do, kill my mules? Stand them out in the sun with their packs on is worse than working them to death. Well, the camels seem to be enjoying it. Well, they ain't got sense enough to know better. Well, this map making is a lot of buffalo chips. Can't you tell that's a mountain without looking through a spyglass? Man, when they gave out brains in Tennessee, you must have been in New Orleans. What do you see when you look through that spyglass? Lots of things. Take a look. Thanks. All I see is a soldier on a rock holding that pole. That's funny. I see well-engineered roads going through cities and towns. Mine shafts and smelters up in the hills. You're joking. Not really. Just looking ahead. That's what this expedition's for. People who come after us. Well, what good will that do you? You won't be around. Oh, I might come back someday. With a white beard and a cane. Walk through the streets looking in the store windows. What for? Nobody will know you had anything to do with it. I'll know. That's enough? Just to know you've done something for other people? You make it sound too unselfish. Nothing heroic about it. I'm just doing what I found I like to do better than anything else I know. School's up. We'll round those hills by the south end, Lieutenant. Let's get moving. Roll the wagon! What did you ride off with Beale for? Just curious about this map-making business. Wondering how he goes about it. Did you find out? Yes. And something else. What? I found out why he does it. Well, I could have told you that. He's looking for glory, like all these frontier heroes. That's where you're wrong. 
He's not thinking of himself at all. He's doing all this for other people, some who haven't even been born yet. You expect me to believe that? No. But there was a time when you might have. Well. What do you make of it, Tall Tale? It's got me. Nobody sees Apaches before the attack, only when. I'd better throw out flankers on both sides, sir, and close up the column. Now, any show of alarm might encourage an attack. You're right, boss. Let's get on to them hills and pick a spot we can hold. Now, give the word. Run! about the Cheyennes. It didn't turn out that way. I was there. But these patches is different. You see, they got a special war god who sleeps all night. They believe that if he sees a warrior die while fighting, he'll take him straight up to heaven. So, they wait till it's light enough so old Sleepy can see what's going on. Well, we'll keep a strong guard anyway, just in case old Sleepy wakes up early. No, Clint, it won't work. Why not? Why can't people like us start over again? Honest, clean. Because you can't start a clean life on dirty money. We couldn't even build a home on it that I could live in. It'd be plank and nail in it to be stolen. Every time the floor creak, I'd, I'd jump and look around and you'd be reaching for a gun. You grew up in a house like that, didn't you? With your old man and Jeb doing the reaching? I couldn't do anything about them. But I can about us. Do what? Talk me into sending that gold back to the bank? That'd be a good beginning. Don't you see, Clint? The only way you'll ever get back to respecting yourself. With $20,000, I can buy all the respect I want. Not mine. No, Clint. Don't kiss me. It's been the answer too many times. But it won't be to this. I won't let it. That's the way you feel? It isn't the way I feel. But it's the way it's got to be. Good evening, Doc. It's kind of rough on a horse keeping him saddled up every night till you bed down, isn't it? A habit, I guess. I used to get a lot of night emergency calls. From your patients or the sheriff? What's on your mind? Them saddlebags you rest your head on every night, McDonald. Mighty valuable pillow. The name is Stanton. Oh, no. It's Clint McDonald. I remember seeing it on wanted notices plastered all over the territory. All right, speak your piece. I'll take half them pretty gold pieces, partner. Half? You're crazy. Mr. Beale wouldn't think so. And he'd be right interested in that lady friend of yours, too. You made yourself a deal. But I don't pay off till the end of the trail. That suits me fine. From now on, you and me are going to be mighty cozy. Just like brothers. Un Dios! Un Dios! Un Dios! Un Dios! Un Dios! Un Dios! Up this varmint sneaking into the camel line. Take care of you, Stephen. He ain't never seen a camel before, but I don't think he come in for a close look. 
¿Por qué ha venido aquí? En la sangre de nuestros abuelos, un dios. He thinks they're big medicine, gods. That's why they haven't attacked. I'll take charge of him, sir. No, he's going back. He's going back and telling the camels are gods. They have big medicine that will kill any Apache who harms us. Well, Vasir Hefe, dígale que este animal es un dios. Que ha muerto por los Apaches, que no eran amigos. Let him go. What now, sir? Proceed as planned. Apaches have the next move. The way I figure, as long as them camels stay whole, our scalps stay on. Take the wheels off and drag it to the next camp for firewood. Break just above the knee. That's too bad. How do you know what to do? Ella, no, 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 no! It's the only thing we can do, hi, Jolly. No, no, my Ekber, no, no! Go ahead, Doctor. Well, that makes one less to stink up this trip. You'll laugh out of the other side of your mouth, Mule Skinner, if them engines finds out that one of our gods is dead. You're right, Talltail. It's the end of our big medicine. There's a chance the Apaches didn't see this. That high ground cuts off their view. Break out the picks and shovels. You're going to be the chief grave digger, Carol. I wasn't hired to bury no stinking camel. You were hired to obey orders. Scout back and see what those Indians are up to. Yeah, boss. I didn't like what I seen, boss. Oh, what was it? Nothing. No Apaches? Nothing but scenery. Where they was, they ain't. And that's the time to start worrying about them. Could they have seen what happened? Not unless they had some front scouts out. Well, if they did, we're in for it. Better dig that hole deep. Prepare to roll. The Spaniards call this stretch the Jornada de la Sed, journey of thirst. Makes me thirsty just to look at it. It's a hundred miles across. If there's any water on it, no white man has ever found it. Well, it's the camel's proving ground. Reason for trying them. They drank this morning and they get no more to work across. Well, I hope the critter's drunk deep. Even an eagle would have to pack a water jug to get across this hell hole. I was hoping we'd make contact with your wagon train before now. Don't worry about me. 
I'm used to rough going. Roll them. Round the wagon! what's left of the Army surveyors. Kip Carson said we wouldn't get this far. Patches, or you run out of water. Don't make no never mind which. Either way, you get powerful dead. Look, I'm telling you, I gotta have some water. What's the trouble here? Ah, uh, my mules are dying. This buzzard won't give them a drink. Take the packs off and put them on the camels. Well, that won't help them any. Draw two buckets. Make sure it goes around. How's it holding out? It ain't. The Apaches cross this desert. There must be water somewhere. We'll make camp here. Tall Tail High Jolly and I are going out to look for water. I'm leaving you in charge of this wagon. While I'm away, don't issue more than one cupful to a man. From the looks of this country, that's more than you're going to find. This water course has been dry five or six months. You'll have to dig awful deep for a water well. Sahara be bladna, the mai tahta ramel. Well, he's only digging for moist sand. They do it on the Sahara. Sometimes there's enough water in it to save a man's life. I'm dry enough to try anything. Let in, Doc. It's the way the army does it. By the time the sidewinder got me, they cut my leg open and filled it up with whiskey. Well, I'd do the same thing if I had any whiskey. I have some in my wagon. My fault, Doc. Hold his arm. Is there some way I can help? This isn't refined doctoring, ma'am. You better stay away for a while. <clears throat> it's a shame to waste that drinking whiskey, Doc. You can have the rest of it all, too. Doc? 
I've seen enough wounded men to know the tall tail's arm has to be amputated. I told you I wouldn't do that except as a last resort. It's come to that, Doctor. He can't do it, Clint. You'll kill him. I've killed before, when I had to. Well, not like this. Not in cold blood. It's either him or me. I'm not going to be kicked out into the desert. Kill that man if she hadn't stopped you. Maybe I could have saved him. Anyway, you never had a real doctor. Stanton was a drunken vet. Get a sack of brand from the chuck wagon. He didn't keep polices on that arm. As hot as he can stand it. Yes, sir. Outside. Too bad you won't fight that hard for something decent. Lieutenant, give my day's food ration and a canteen of water. Get your horse. You're getting out of this camp. There's a settlement about 80 miles southwest of here on the old Spanish trail.
sure look disappointed. You must love those gold pieces better than your life. Man, I love them even better than yours. Okay, brother. Let's ride. appreciate what you've done for me, Miss Lily. It was mighty good of you. You don't have to thank me, Tall Tale. I was glad to do it. From what I hear, I got you to thank for saving this wing of mine. Maybe even my life. I still can't believe you'd have gone through with that operation. Didn't give him a chance to find out for himself. You kind of hanker for him, don't you, Miss Lily? Well, I reckon if you feel that way about him, he can't be all bad. For your sake, I kind of wish him luck. A little bit of it, anyway. Why don't we hole up till sundown? Stop now, we'll never get up. How about it, partner? Is half my steak worth sticking your head in this oven? Yeah, if I can live to spend it. I'd give it all for a full canteen. They smell water. Give them their heads. No, partner, it was a pretty good offer you made. All them gold pieces for a canteen of water. But I'm making you a better trade than that. I'm leaving you a whole pool of it. Making sure you live to spend that gold, aren't you? Yeah. With two horses and both canteens. Now roll under your gun. Unhook your belt. Fill up that canteen. you half a cup of water to each man, Lieutenant. And you better get out of this sun for a while? Worse than the wagon. Out here, at least you can breathe. Strange how things work out. Clinton and I tried to use you to escape from the law. Now there's no escape for any of us. You're quitting too soon. High Court hasn't rendered its verdict yet. I've forgotten there were people like you in this world. Forget that part of your life, Lily. There's a new one waiting for you on the other side of those mountains.
water, too, McDonald, if that's why you came back. I came to tell you I found some. Plenty of it. Where is it? South of here, about 30 miles. Matt Carroll and I found it together. We figured he'd gone after you. What did he want, that valuable horse of yours? Both horses. And the canteens. Where is he now? Lying with his face in the water hole. But he isn't drinking. Why'd you come back? Couldn't be just to help us. I have my reasons, and they'll stay mine. They'll stay yours as long as they don't hurt anyone else. Wagons, south! <laughs> There, Mr. Beale. Right up in that rock formation. The hem is in from all sides. We gotta find better cover than this, boss. We can't do it without horses. Your camels are still alive. Why not hitch them to the wagons and make a run for it? We wouldn't get far before they cut us to pieces. We won't be out there. Dead men will be riding those wagons. The Indians will be chasing them. If we lose them camels and wagons, we'll never get out of this desert. I'll be leading the caravan. While the Indians are chasing me, you take the water hole. I'll circle back and bring them into your range of fire. Those camels can't run fast or far enough for you to get away from the Indians, if that's what you figured. I wasn't. I don't blame you for thinking it. Okay, McDonald. We'll take your offer at face value. Let's get at it fast before they guess what we're up to. You men, come with me.
after they finish McDonald. They know we've tricked them. Here they come. Get ready. ammunition left to stop another charge if they make it. They'll make it all right. I reckon we're all in for a short haircut. Got to get that ammunition wagon up here. I'm going after it. Cover me. This ain't no job for one man, boss. I'm going with you. It's an army job, too. I'll go along. Cover it. some thinking about that house with the creaky floor. I'm going to build it your way. Mr. Beal, in the wagon you'll find my saddlebag with $20,000 in gold in it. Send it back to the bank at Rio Gordo. I haven't any more use for it. You know, McDonald, a man just can't buy his freedom. I know. In my book, you've earned yours. Just raise your fingers in there and rub them together. That gritty feeling between them is gold dust. 